Oh, hey, look at this. Looks like we got ourselves a little old convoy. <laughs> How do we get it wrong? Nobody saw it coming. The small fringe minority holding unacceptable uh, views. The way Pure. through this pandemic is by getting everyone excited. Yeah, I definitely don't see Joe Biden passing a driving test if he took one today. And he might legally not be able to drive a car, but he's allowed to drive a nation into the ground. Welcome back, beautiful and, and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org. Lots of insanity and nonsense to cover. As, of course, the financial problem that we've been warning you about for a number of years now is finally coming to head. As we have the latest numbers that are absolutely shocking and surprising. This as governments create more decrees, trying to impose their will on people. As, of course, by and large, people say, screw you. We stand for freedom, liberty, and individual personal responsibility. So yeah, we're going to be talking about that plus a lot more all in this video. And there's so much to get into. We're just going to jump right into it as, of course, there is a major protest underway in Canada right now surrounding the Freedom Convoy. Truckers who have decided to block the Ambassador Bridge in protest of the Canadian government implementing discriminatory policies that would, of course, negatively affect the global global supply chains. Why is Canada doing this? Why aren't they willing to relinquish power like the many governments who have been doing so with the new data, with the new information coming surrounding the global sickness? Well, it could have something to do with the World Economic Forum successfully penetrating half of Justin Trudeau's cabinet, as admitted by Klaus Schwab himself, who of course is literally trying to push the Great Reset agenda. The protests are still ongoing to the point where Toyota even announced today that they have halted the production at three Ontario plants because of this protest as Justin Trudeau, Castro, the Prime Minister of Canada, announced that the drivers are, quote, endangering jobs, impeding trade, and threatening the economy. Gee whiz. It's as almost as if he's describing his job description with everything that he's been imposing on the Canadian people within the last two years. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. As of course, these protests are against Trudeau's policy, which would hurt the global supply chains and their locals economy with, of course, discriminatory policies that are not even backed by science. Now, the trucker protests have inspired other movements around the world. In the United States, Facebook has taken down calls to protest and organize. In New Zealand, police officers ruthlessly attacked citizens who didn't want to live under the thumb of government as they arrested mostly nonviolent, peaceful protesters protesters in that country that have been inspired by the truckers in Canada. There's also similar trucker protests planned in Brussels and in France, where the government there preemptively banned freedom convoys and created more mandates and decrees, as of course, these are protests against their original mandates and decrees. Do you think protesting is going to stop against mandates and decrees with you implementing more mandates and decrees? No, it's ridiculous. And France along with Brussels, has even went down to such totalitarian tactics as to threaten peaceful protesters with two years in prison for daring to speak out against the state. As already, there is a significant convoy moving towards Paris that is demanding that France end its remaining restrictions that are absolutely ridiculous and nonsensical. What's the response by the French here? Well, Sacre brew and screw you, Rothschild President Emmanuel Macron. As of course, it looks like the protest has not been swayed by the threats of government and imprisonment and is still continuing on in large numbers. Now, you would think the situation would be just a little bit different, especially here in the United States, and it's not when in New York City, people are still being arrested for not getting government permission 
to be inside of a movie theater. This just happened hours ago after, of course, the government just got rid of this mandate, but that still hasn't stopped a lot of the utter insanity as parents are still being hauled off and kicked out of school board meetings for not wearing masks and students at Ohio State University are being told to replace their mask between every sip and bite that they put into their mouth hole. Yeah, we definitely still have a long way to go, especially with hypocritical, egotistical, self-loving politicians who are absolute hypocrites and are choosing to implement their own policies that, of course, favor them rather than, of course, the people that they're supposed to serve. It's important to note here that a lot of this insanity is passed down by government bureaucrats and PR spokespersons like Jen Psaki that said that school children should still be masked in states with no mandates and that the federal government is still not budging on their own restrictions, mandates, and lockdowns as, of course, many Democratic states have already decided to do this, including even the United Kingdom themselves. These made-up delusional statements do not have any science behind them. They do not have any data behind them. What has been the result of many of these policies? Well, the destruction of freedom worldwide, as even according to the Washington Post, global freedom has, quote, hit a dismal record low, with, quote, sickness restrictions making things worse. This, according to the latest data coming from the EIU that reported and documented the destruction of people's personal liberties, all in the disguise of policies that absolutely failed. Now, is this all an accident? Is this all a coinkydink? Absolutely not. And of course, I talk about my own theories and perspectives on LukeUncensored.com, our own platform, where, of course, I have a lot more to say about this. I'm still biting my tongue here. I have a lot of things to show you that, of course, I am not allowed to show you here on this particular platform. That's why I just created my own platform where I get to say and do whatever we want. As, of course, there's some latest bombshell information quantifying almost the exact thing that we were saying from the very beginning of this, I believe that a lot of this was not done by accident. What exactly has been happening? What's going on? What's going to be happening next? Well, of course, I'm going to be talking about that specifically later on today on another video only available to members on LukeUncensored.com. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Click the link down in the description below right now to find out more. Now, as some politicians still cling to the bastardized power and authority that they have granted themselves in protest of the people, there's other countries that are absolutely seeing things for what they are, as Sweden just announced that this entire saga from the last two years, this entire sickness is over. This, of course, is the country that refused to impose strict lockdowns from the very beginning of this entire nightmare. And now they're making an argument, according to the latest data that's coming in, that backs it, that officially declares that they are over with this nonsense. And when we look at the data, it actually does signal this. Again, I'm not a medical doctor, not here trying to give you any kind of medical advice, but this is what the early preliminary data is showing. And if everything that we're seeing is true, there's going to be some significant ramifications when it comes to the end of this, especially with the historical context of civil unrest that is usually met by large-scale sickness events throughout recorded human history, predictively, there is a possibility for this, as there is a trend for it. Along with that is also the larger economic ramifications, which, of course, will tsunami and directly affect the people of not just the United States, but of the world with the significant ramifications of shutting things down. Economic trends usually take months, and I think it's fair to say whether socially, politically, or economically, there's going to be some major ramifications from everything that we've been through within the last two years. And that's why I think the establishment bought off PR representatives who are parading themselves around as journalists are turning on the propaganda machine full blast with absolute nonsense and idiotic, ridiculous claims like NPR that just declared using the wrong color emoji is racist. 
Yes, this is the nonsense that they try to fill your head with so you don't think about the larger problems coming your way, which absolutely have all the fingerprints of the ruling establishment. The bankers, the corporations, the billionaires that stole all the money and wealth and your future from you, they're not the problems. Emojis with different colors. Now those son of a guns are the real problem in our society. And that's what they would like you to think. As of course, US inflation numbers have jumped 7.5% within the past year, a 40 year high. And those are the official numbers. The real numbers are a lot higher according to my own personal perspective and opinion. But even the official numbers are at the highest rate within the last four decades, which is absolutely destroyed destroying people's savings, their wages, and their purchasing power of the US dollar, which is having a huge astronomical negative effect on human life. This is as if your money is literally evaporating right in front of your eyes. A lot of poor people are not invested in stocks or assets or real estate, and they literally just have their money in a bank or underneath their couch. That money is literally being liquidated right in front of your eyes because of the policies, the failed policies by the U.S. Federal Reserve. What's the Biden administration's to poor people becoming more poor under his policies? Well, these numbers are just elevated. And he insists that this is temporary. And of course, as we know, it is absolutely not. This is not temporary, especially with the debt that the United States is in, especially with the money printing that the government commits. As on average, if you calculate this latest inflation numbers, Americans are paying $250 more per month than what they usually did. As on average, the cost of consumer goods has skyrocketed. Energy costs up nearly 27% from January compared to last year, and the cost cost of living is just becoming more expensive as the billionaires in this world become richer than they ever have before. Do you see the correlation here? This is one reason why Biden's poll numbers have been absolutely skyrocketing down, as of course, people are feeling the full effects of the Build Back Better agenda, Great Reset World Economic Forum 2030 vision, which of course this administration is implementing at full speed, no matter what the consequences. Along, of course, with this, there is global supply chain issues with, of course, the lockdowns and restrictions and mandates that governments have implemented to the point where there are even national conversations started about carrying your own mugs to local shops as of course there now is a disposable cup shortage hitting this country you tie that in with a labor shortage you tie that in with massive money printing you tie that in with larger effects of lockdown still waiting to affect this economy and holy cow you have an absolute crap storm that there is no denying just like the amounts of homeless people that keeps growing in our major metropolitan areas. The government, of course, incentivizes a lot of this nonsense. As in San Francisco, people are paid hundreds of dollars by the state just to live on the streets. The amount of homeless people will grow with the destruction of people's mental health and the destruction of people's ability to have any kind of economic upward mobility. All of that is being denied to the average American as, of course, the larger economic and mental health problems in this country are becoming more unavoidable by the day. It's in your face. It's only going to get worse. This is the Build Back Better Great Reset Agenda unfolding right in front of your eyes. The United States is not just dealing with this problem. China as well as dealing with major financial problems. So is the European Union that also has a major energy crisis underway as the president of the United States literally is threatening to cut off Europe from Russian energy. All of this as the situation becomes very tense between Russia and the West, especially when it comes to the latest events unfolding in Ukraine, as Russia is now planning a nuclear strategic exercise. As of course, it almost looks like this administration with its low poll numbers, with its crashing economy, with the civilians being mad at it for their restrictions and lockdowns that they're still holding on to, might see this as an escape from all of this and could potentially be pushing for a conflict which is becoming more real by the day. We should, of course, be extremely skeptical and have our eyes open to the current situation since, of course, it is a drastic one 
becoming more drastic by the day. It's ridiculous what's happening here. I think it's it's only going to become more ridiculous. If you think I'm wrong about that, let me know why down in the comment section below. I always appreciate your perspective, your feedback. Maybe I'm just too down the rabbit hole. Maybe I'm just too into the news. Maybe I'm missing some sites here. But from my perspective, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. That's just my perspective. And I hope I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about that particular understanding. But hey, that's just my perspective. I got a lot more to say. I'm going to be shooting another Another video right after this one talking about the latest bomb shell information that uh, is definitely worth talking about you want to see that video go to lukeuncensored.com right now I hope to see you there I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your participation for you spending time with me and because you do I wouldn't be here this is why I love you guys stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org